Well, good afternoon. Welcome to my uh, studio here in fabulous Las Vegas. Uh, I'm Dean Tenney. Uh, we've been doing some uh, carve outs of uh, test issues. Uh, I have longer narrative lectures. And what I've been doing is carving out uh, specifics of those narrative lectures for specific strategies, for example, instead of, uh, you know, the, there's four options lectures, for example, lecture one is nomenclature. That's where you this is carved out of. Uh, lecture two is basic options. Lecture three is stock plus options. And lecture four is advanced options strategies. But what I've been doing is pulling out straddles and spreads and covered calls and just going uh, through those specifics. So today uh, we're going to be talking about intrinsic value. In intrinsic value is uh, pretty important because it's a term that they throw around a lot on the exam. So if you're not comfortable with it, you can get bogged down. I mean, you won't be able to perform on the on the on the exam. So the intrinsic value is the relationship of the market price to the of the stock to the strike price of the option. We're not asking about you know uh, the players. We're talking about the contract. Those are different questions. So be careful. Are you being asked about the contract, or are you being asked about the players? Now, the reason this is important is because let me get my annotation tool out. Is a lot of times on the exam they'll say you close out at intrinsic value. And if you don't know what intrinsic value is, I just mentioned, you're gonna have troubles figuring out what is the offset. So that's phraseology you can encounter on the test and that's why it's important to have a handle on intrinsic value. You close out at intrinsic value. Uh, I'm under no obligation to tell you whether the contract got exercised. Another reason intrinsic value is important is because if at expiration, the contract has intrinsic value, the contract will be exercised. And so again, at some point on the exam, I'm not under an obligation to tell you where that happened. You should be able to say, okay, it's an Apple 175 call, the expiration Apple's 190, it's going to get exercised. And then again, the other third thing that can happen with an option, but basically you should think of it this way, every option question on the exam is gonna end with either the option contract got traded, the option contract got exercised or the option contract got uh, expired worthless. And again, on exercise and expire worthless at expiration, I don't have to tell you that necessarily. I should be able to you know, make you figure it out by telling you where is the market price at expiration, right? So if at expiration, The contract has no intrinsic value. The contract will expire worthless. Now, again, we're not asking whether that's good news or bad news. I mean, that's a different question. That's going to be good news if you sold it and bad news if you bought it. That's not the point. We're talking about this relationship and how important this is. Here at Traded, they like to say, like, you know, several weeks later, you know, they love to do these time clock questions, right? and you close out at intrinsic value. So that's why this discussion is important uh, for test takers. Oh, I forgot to set my timer. I'm trying to keep these things at 15 minutes. So uh, intrinsic value on a call contract, uh, let me move my video feed. Uh, intrinsic value in the, or in the money in a call contract is when the market price is up from the strike price. So a great mnemonic is call up call up. Is the market price up from the strike price? Now, another thing you can use is what's called a framing question. A framing question is a question I ask myself and say, self, is the contract likely to be exercised? Is it likely? It's easier for most people to do this from the long perspective, but you can do it from either perspective, but most people, beginners, find the long perspective easier. Is it likely somebody wants to call Apple away at 175 when Apple's at 179? The answer is yes. If you answer that framing question, yes, that means the contract has intrinsic value. Again, it's not good news or bad news. That's a different question. You got to tell me whether you bought it or you sold it, what the market price is. We're just asking about that relationship. So very important you stay focused on what you're being asked about on the test. Let me get my annotation tool again. And what we're asking you to recognize is the relationship between these two things right? The strike price and the market price. Right now, this contract has four points of intrinsic value. Now, if you're going to trade options for me, I'd like to make you write a thousand times. 
options are a wasting asset. Time value rose. We haven't talked about time value yet, but that's going to go bye-bye. At expiration, the contract is only going to be worth its intrinsic value. So that's why, again, the conversation is important. So we have three relationships. We have in the money. By the way, to say this contract has four points of intrinsic value and to say it's in the money four points is the same discussion. Let me get out my annotation tool again. Yeah, I'll see if this color shows up. I think it might. Right, so that's one relationship in the money. And another relationship in the money in, in terms of value or synonymous terms, as I just said. And the second relationship is at the money. And that's when the strike price and the market price are one and the same. So if Apple's trading at 175 and the strike price is 175, that contract is at the money, at the money. And then the last last relationship is out of the money, out of the money. Again, we're not talking about investors. Investors aren't in or out or at the money. That's contracts. So be careful. You're not being asked about how do people make, lose, or uh, break even. We're being asked about this relationship. There's no such thing as negative intrinsic value. It either has it or it does not. So we're looking at an Apple 175 call contract. If Apple's at 169, again, we can use our framing question. It's not likely somebody wants to call it away at 175 when the stock's at 169. We can use call up, the market price is not up. And again, there's no such thing as negative interest value. We just tell me on the test, this contract is out of the money. By the way, the reason this is important again, remember if this is at expiration, and it's uh, Apple at expiration is 169. It's a 175 call. It's going to expire worthless. That's important because that may not be information that's given to you. You might just say, they might just say, at expiration, Apple's 169. And then what you've got to be able to do is intuit that that means that this contract has expired worthless. And then depending on whether you're long or short, depends on whether that's going to be good news or bad news. So out of the money, we just uh, talked about out of the money relationship. No thing, such thing as intrinsic value. Uh, here's just a graph. I just wanted to show you what a graph looks like. Call up. We said calls have intrinsic value when the market price is up from the strike price. We said that's synonymous with in, in the money. We're looking at Apple. Uh, today, uh, I just uh, checked Apple before I got onto the uh, got in the studio to record this. And Apple is at 179. Whoop, let me get a different color. Hmm. Apple is at 179. And again, what we're looking at is a relationship of this call contract to the market price. As you see here, the market price is up. Below there, I think that is a floor. That's not testable. That's just Dean. XP means strike price. And I think of options as being about floors and ceilings. Floors and ceilings. In a call contract, there's a floor, but there isn't a ceiling in terms of that relationship of the market price. Because the market price, let's just clean this up. Market price, remember, can go up an infinite amount, right? And again, be careful. We're not asking about good news or bad news, whether you're, you know, got a naked call on unlimited risk. We're just asking about the relationship of the market price of Apple to the strike price of the option. So we have two types of contracts. We have calls and puts. And so let's look at that put relationship. You know, I always say, if you only remember one thing about options, please remember call up, put down, call up, put down. As you see here, intrinsic value and the put is the opposite. We said intrinsic value and in the money are synony synonymous terms. So intrinsic value or in the money and put contracts when the market price is less than the strike price, put down. So we said we can either use put down or another thing we could use, is the contract likely to be exercised? Is it likely somebody wants to uh, put Apple to somebody, put Apple to somebody, sell Apple at 175 when it's at 169? The answer is yes. And again, what we're being asked about is the relationship of those two prices put down. So that has six points of intrinsic value, six points of intrinsic value. At the money is when the strike price and the market price are the same. And then please note, in the money and intrinsic value for test purposes are synonymous terms. So to say this contract has six points of intrinsic value, to say it's in the money six points is intellectually the same thing. You know, I always joke options like learning a foreign language where they say when you dream that 
the dream, the foreign language, that's when you know it. So I guess when you have your first options dream, <laughs> that's when you're, you're on the right track. Uh, so we said uh, that's what it looks like in terms of out of the money. Again, we're looking at this relationship. It's not likely somebody's going to stick. I'll take the short perspective this time. It's not likely somebody's going to stick it to me or put it to me at 175. It's unlikely if I'm short to put and have an obligation to buy Apple at 175 and Apple's 179, it's not likely right now it's going to be exercised right now, because remember, we have this time between now and expiration. And if this is expiration and Apple's 179, this put contract is going to expire worthless. Now, I told I'm taking the short perspectives. So that would be wonderful news for me. But again, we're not talking about making money or losing money or breaking even. We're just testing and making sure you understand this relationship. Uh, you know, if Apple right now is Apple's 179, but Apple test question has a high beta, it's very volatile. And that means it moves a lot as compared to the market. And that means the premiums are going to be larger. And let's say Apple went to 169, again, put down, that would have six points of intrinsic value. Now, on the downside, Apple can only go to zero. You know, if Apple went to 150, it would have, you know, 25 points of intrinsic value. And then there's a ceiling here. Above here, no intrinsic value. If that's the case at expiration, the contract will expire worthless. All right, so uh, here's an overview. The reason we said this is important is because the intrinsic value plus the time value equals the premium. You know, so once I tell you the premium of Apple is nine, let me get a different color here. Once I tell you the premium is nine, then I can ask you about this relationship again. Let me get my video feed out of the way. So uh, I wouldn't worry too much on the test about time value because you know time value erodes. I think of time value as everything in excess of the intrinsic value. I told you, if you're gonna trade options in my firm, I'd make you write a thousand times. Options are a wasting asset, time value erodes. At expiration, the contract is only worth its intrinsic value. If the contract has intrinsic value, at expiration, the contract will be exercised. If at expiration, the contract has no intrinsic value, the contract will expire worthless. And again, that's important because on the test, you might have to figure that out based on where they tell you the market price is at expiration. And so you're, when you're buying or selling the, the option, you're gonna need to pay the premium or receive the premium. But we said the premium consists of two things, the intrinsic value and the time value. And the point of our discussion has been I always like to stack that relation there is you need to have a handle on that four. That's the most important thing is, do you know the intrinsic value of an Apple 175 call with Apple at 179 is four? Okay, so now four plus something equals nine. And that means if we're the buyer, I'll take the buyer's perspective. That means we're paying five points in time value, way north of this uh, little carve out. But as a buyer, you got to turn the time value into intrinsic value, you're going to lose. Again, different lecture, different topic, but the break even here is 184. And at 184, the contract I bought for nine would be worth nine. There's no way to think of the break even. A lower strike call contracts always are going to have a greater premium. So what we mean by that is if we looked right now at a 170 call contract, that would have something more than nine. You know, it'd be something more than nine. And if we looked at, for example, a 180 call, that would be something less than nine, right? A choice to buy Apple at a lower price is more desirable. And that means you're gonna to have to pay a greater premium for that. And so we don't know what the Apple December 170 call premium is, but if the Apple December 175 is nine, it's something less than nine. And we don't know what the premium here and the given information about an Apple December 180 call is, but if 175 calls nine, the December 180 is gonna be something less than nine. Now on puts, on puts, let's just clean up our slide again. On uh, puts, it's the opposite relationship. And again, I like to stack my market price there. So, you know, we're looking at an Apple December 175 put at nine. The contract has no intrinsic value. The most important concept is the intrinsic value. Because the time value is gonna go poof. You know, time value works to the advantage of the seller and works to the detriment of the buyer. Who cares? It's not testable. I'm just, you know, expanding your mind, hopefully. <laughs> Anyways, uh, the point here is right now, this only has time value. 
And again, this is the concept we're most concerned with is this concept of intrinsic value. Now we don't know, we don't know what the premium given the information we have here, let me clean up my slide again. We don't know what a December 170 put premium is, but it's gonna be something less than nine. Now we don't know what a December 180 put is, but it's gonna be greater than nine. Higher strike put contracts always have greater premiums. A choice to sell at a higher strike is more desirable. People who know that, you know, charge accordingly. So uh, longer term con option contracts always have greater premiums. So time value, the concept of time value, right? When you buy this Apple December 175, call it nine. Now I'm putting a participant, now a player. And if you're a player and you buy an Apple December 175, call it nine, you got to be right about three things. Direction, you're choosing up. You got to be right about how far up because you got to cover your out-of-pocket costs. You got to turn the time value to intrinsic value. So you call up, you got to be right about direction up, how far up, nine points and timing. So, you know, if I give you more time to be right, it's more likely you're going to be right. I'm going to charge you accordingly. Now, remember, most uh, option contracts come in a cycle that is shorter than a year. And so they're all short term. There's only one option contract, test question, that could possibly qualify for a long-term capital gain because you'd have to be at risk for more than 12 months. And there's only one option contract that goes out that far. And that is a test question, a long-term equity appreciation potential security. And one way I could ask you to recognize that is by just that huge premium would have. So, you know, I show you a bunch of Apple 175 calls and show you the premiums and ask which one's most likely a leap and it's missing the expiration. You say, oh my goodness, look at that one. Oh, that's gotta be a leap, that's gotta be a leap. The whole point of the discussion has been that you're going to encounter the terminology nomenclature, that's the fancy word for vocabulary for terminology in terms of value. And we said, if you aren't good at that, you won't be able to close out things when they say several weeks later, you close out at intrinsic value, right? So if you don't know that, you won't be able to figure out. If you do a T, I do money in, money out, but you know you won't be able to close it out. And if you don't know intrinsic value, you won't know at expiration whether the contract got exercised or not, because we remember we said if there's intrinsic value, it's going to be exercised. Now, again, different question whether that's good news or bad news. And then if you don't know in terms of value, you won't know what happened to the contract in terms of expiration. By the way, this mnemonic is very, very important. T is a good way to remember what can happen to an option contract. It can be traded. It can be exercised. It can expire. Again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm under no obligation on the test to tell you about whether this happened or this happened, because at some point you should be able to figure that out based on whether the contract at expiration has intrinsic value. Anytime you get three of a thing, you can stand by for the except format. All of one can happen to an option contract, except, except, right? And D will be something like break even. The option contracts don't break even, people do, right? So uh, be careful on that. All right, well, it looks like I've been successful in keeping this under 15 minutes. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, you know, give me your comments on, the narrative lecture versus the, uh, you know, this is basically a carve out of lecture one. Uh, I'll put the link to lecture one in the, uh, you know, thing that pops up and tells you about, you know, what is uh, available. And uh, let me know your thoughts on that. I'll, you know, continue to carve out. So maybe not only on options, uh, but those will be the last one on options for a while. I'm kind of, I don't know about you, but we're, <laughs> we got hours on options. So uh, enough. If you, I, I say that, but if you've got something else you want to see, uh, put in a lecture request. Okay. So, um, like, share, subscribe. If you're on your Series 7, you're on the second leg of your testing journey, and there's still people behind you on the first leg of their testing journey, which is the SIE. Please refer them to the channel. About half our channel is Series 7. I don't mind that because I love Series 7. I love all the exams, but Series 7 is kind of my favorite thing. Um, but, you know, uh, and then you're going to do your third leg, which is our 65 or 66. We have that available as well. But now circle back and uh, tell those SIE folks, uh, about the channel. There's plenty of SIE stuff for them as well. Uh, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next uh, lecture.